Hello everyone and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, let me continue with our AWS SageMaker demo. And today I'm going to show you guys SageMaker Studio. Please note that we are going to use SageMaker Studio pretty much throughout the entire course. So please pay attention and it's gonna be super fun and actually much easier compared to pretty much every lecture that we covered so far. If you guys recall, in the previous lesson, we went through a quick, fun demo to show you guys the AWS uh, Marketplace. And we have been able to explore here our YOLO V3 object detector. And we uploaded a bunch of images and we have been able to test it out. And it actually did pretty good, like did a very good job. Okay, so what I wanted to show you guys right now is the AWS SageMaker Studio. So Amazon SageMaker Studio is a web-based visual interface where developers can build, train, and deploy AI ML models in one place. So this is simply what the SageMaker Studio looks like. And uh, in the next slide, I'm going to show you guys, we're going to jump right ahead to our SageMaker Studio, and then I'm going to explore pretty much every single topic here. But this is simply the interface. So everything is contained in one place. You can go ahead and launch a Jupyter Notebook from here, for example. You can also upload your data and upload maybe a, another Jupyter Notebook from here. You can also run multiple experiments. You can have everything contained in one visual interface. And that's why SageMaker Studio enhances product productivity by 10x, since it offers much higher visibility and control compared to regular notebook instances. And what is really powerful as well about SageMaker Studio is that developers can manage experiments, debug machine learning models, monitor models for bias and drift, all of that in here in one visual web-based interface. Okay, so let me show you guys how we can navigate to SageMaker Studio. So let's go back and head to Amazon SageMaker here. And if you guys go up, you will see Studio. So you can go ahead and click on Studio. And then afterwards, you should be able to see that right now we have our Amazon SageMaker homepage. And you should be able to see SageMaker Studio here. It's telling you launch SageMaker Studio. So please go ahead and click on that. All right, so here we go. Here we have our control panel within our SageMaker Studio. And what you guys need to do, especially if you just um, starting a SageMaker Studio for the first time, you will need to create here a user. So if you go ahead and click on that plus sign here, and that is going to tell you, I wanted to create a new user profile. I'm gonna set everything as the same, just the default value here. And I'm going to also set the AIAM role or identity and access management role to here the default. And, and then I'm just gonna click on next. And it's telling me here, uh, say studio settings. So if you wanted to configure the studio IDE and notebooks for your organization, just keep everything as is, click next as well. And then afterwards, it's telling me here, just click submit. And that is going to create here another um, domain for you basically. But I already have a domain here. So all what you need to do is to click on launch app and then you click on studio. And that is going to open here the Amazon SageMaker Studio. And here we go. It will um, open our Amazon SageMaker Studio homepage. And let me show you guys from a very high level what's going on in here. There's a lot of information, a lot of functionality. So on the left-hand side here, okay, you can simply go ahead and click on that arrow pointing upwards to upload files. So what you guys see here, these are all different notebooks. So let me show you. So the, all of these are extension IPYNB. So all of these are Jupyter notebooks. I can also upload data. I can also upload, let's say, CSV data. So now I have CSV files uploaded here as well, okay? And that's simply how you can upload your data. What you can see as well here, you, there are many options. First one is you can go ahead and click on SageMaker Jump Start. And please note that every single block in here, we are going to cover in great details. So we can have a full day that covers Amazon SageMaker Jump Start. We have another day that covers the Amazon uh, SageMaker Autopilot, and also we'll learn about SageMaker Data Wrangler as well. So basically SageMaker Jumpstart, if you click on it here, you should be able to see basically applications that has already been created for you. 
You can have, for example, models. So if you click on models, for example, you should be able to see all the different models already trained, pre-trained for you. You can go ahead, get these models. You can essentially include your own data set. So if you would like to retrain these models or using your own custom data set, you can. So for example, here I have Inception V3. This is an image classifier model um, by Google. And you will see that this has been trained, for example, using the ImageNet data set. There is also, again, many, many models available. It's telling you that there is 322 models available, which is pretty, pretty crazy to me. Here we have, for example, if you scroll to the right, you should be able to see we have ResNet 18. And ResNet is one of the state-of-the-art artificial neural networks, which stands for residual neural networks, can do wonders. And it has been trained on a large data set called ImageNet data set. And you can see as well many, many applications or models available for you. And if you would like to, let's say, explore all models, you should be able to filter out your models based on the problem type. For example, I could want it to do maybe regression or maybe want it to do text classification or maybe object detection. Let's click regression, for example. And you will see here many options available for you. If I want to do linear regression or if I wanted to do XGBoost regression, again, pretty incredible. And all what you need to do is just few clicks and then kickstart a new job for you. And you can, of course, as I mentioned, upload your own specific custom data sets as well. If you wanted to maybe try, let's say, um, object detection, for example, here we go, multiple networks available. So we have, for example, SSD or single shot detector. We also have ResNets, as I mentioned earlier, many, many available networks here or models. And please note that a lot of these are in different frameworks. For example, this one here is in PyTorch. Here, this is a PyTorch logo. We can also see some of them are in TensorFlow. And this is simply Google's framework to build, train, and deploy AI and ML models at scale. And if you go back, let me show you. And again, you can also filter out the models based on the problem type. So if you click on problem type, you will see that you can have multiple problem types. For example, I can do, let's say um, here, Financial, for example, if you click on financial, you will see that I have multiple projects readily available for you and you can go ahead and tweak all these different models and, of course, upload your own custom based data set. Let's say I wanted to explore maybe, for example, credit card decisions, for example, if you click on it, you should be able to see that now you have the solution and you can just go ahead and click launch solution and that is going to launch a solution for you. And there is a ton of documentation and here explanation as well of what's going on here behind the scenes. Okay, let me go back. This is just a quick overview of Amazon SageMaker Jumpstart. If you wanted to explore what we call it autopilot, autopilot, essentially you can go ahead here and you can kickstart a training job and you can essentially do everything on autopilot. All what you need to do is you need to upload your own data to S3 and you need to specify where the trained model artifacts are going to be here. And you just say create experiment. And that's it. Everything is done for you on autopilot. Pretty incredible as well. And again, we're going to discuss that in great details. And you can also do what we call it Amazon SageMaker Data Wrangler. If you click on it, you should be able to see that Data Wrangler is simply a tool where you can visualize data, perform feature engineering, clean up the data, many, many options available for you here. And you can do all of that again with just few clicks of a button and without writing any code at all. All right, next, what I wanted to show you guys is if you scroll to the bottom here, you should be able to see a notebook, Python 3. So if you just click on that, you should be able to see a new notebook that opened in here. And this is exactly the same as we have done before. If you guys remember when we instantiated a notebook instance, here it's exactly the same. I can go ahead within Jupyter Notebook and I can go and code here. So I can say, for example, x equals to four. If you want to run the cell, you press shift and enter. And here is telling you the kernel is still starting. And basically here the kernel on the bottom, it shows starting. And if you would like, again, it will take maybe a couple of seconds for it to start. But essentially you can go ahead and you can select, for example, here you have multiple images available. One, if you are doing data science, generic data science, if you wanted to, let's say, developing code within PyTorch that leverage PyTorch libraries, you can do that. You can also, if you scroll to the bottom, we also have the TensorFlow as well. Again, pretty powerful, extremely powerful. And you can also see that here we are talking about Python 3. 
And let's wait maybe for a couple of seconds until this kernel shows it's ready, okay? And then you can go ahead and execute the code. Basically, what I wanted to do is I wanted to say x equals to 4, and then I wanted to show what's in x. And then I wanted to maybe write y equals to 5, and then show what's in y. And then to insert a new cell, you press B on your keyboard, and that is going to insert new cells for you. And then maybe I would like to add, let's say, x plus y. So you're going to say z equals 2 x, let's say times y, for example, I just want to multiply them together instead of adding them. And then I want to see what's in z, for example. So once this kernel is ready, you can go ahead and actually run the, all this code simply. You can say kernel, and then you can say restart kernel and run all cells, and that is going to run every single cell for you. And please note that this strategy, what we have here, that's what we're going to use pretty much throughout the entire course. So on the left-hand side, you guys will see all of these notebooks. This is just a sample of those, of them. Uh, we are going to go through all of these, okay? And we are not going to use the older way of defining a notebook instance and, and all of that. We're going to do everything in here, in Amazon SageMaker Studio. So here we go. Now you see the kernel. It said it's uh, right now it's idle. So we can go ahead and actually run it. So if you press Shift and Enter, here we go. I put number four in X y equals to 5, I put 5 in y, z equals to x times y, now I have 20, simply 4 times 5, pretty good. I can of course as well maybe add, let's say, if I wanted to insert a new cell before that, if you press A, that is going to insert a new cell. And you can simply say, for example, um, welcome to my first code script, something like that. You can go ahead here, change that cell from code to a markdown cell and you can go ahead and run it so if you press shift and enter right now you will see that right now it became text and it will not going to be executed if you wanted to maybe make it a little bit bold you can go ahead and add the hashtag here and add space and shift and enter you will see that right now it becomes a little bit bigger size and now it looks like a header basically okay all right one last thing that i wanted to show you guys which is very very important the question is, how can I turn off this kernel? Please know that this is a kernel running, okay, meaning it's executing in the background, and it's actually charging you money as well. Of course, if you are outside of the AWS free tier. But in general, I want you guys to first learn how to save it. For example, you can go ahead and just say save, and that is going to save it for you here. I can go ahead and close that. And in order for me to shut down that kernel, on the left-hand side here, and if you go to this um, um, here logo, you will see that there is running terminals and kernels. Just click on it. And these are all the different kernels that are running behind the scenes. Please, please, before you exit Amazon SageMaker Studio, please, again, make sure to turn off everything in here. So all these are running instances and are costing you money behind the scenes, especially if you are using ML M5 X4 X large. So please make sure to say, I want to shut that, shut that down. Are you sure? Yes, please. And make sure that everything here is clear. I want to shut that down. Yep, please go ahead. I want to shut down that kernel session. Everything is clear right now. Make sure, run it again. Perfect. So now we're good. That means we are not going to be incurring any additional charges. All right. Okay. So that's, again, a very quick tour of Amazon SageMaker Studio. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lesson, let's go ahead. I'm going to show you guys additional functionalities as well. Please stay tuned, best of luck, and I will see you guys in the next lesson.